is the 261st episode of Comic Focus Weekly for the third week of April. This episode is titled, Heda Our Warning. Comic Focus Weekly is brought to you by Clone This User. Duplicates you love. Clone an existing Salesforce user with the click of a button by the desktop or in Salesforce One mobile, mobile, mobile. Available free on the App Exchange or go to www.clonethisuser.com. I'm your host, Jason Now and joining me, co host Justin Edelstein. How you doing, Justin? I'm good. Yeah? If you're a clone this user user, haha, <laughs> see what they did there? Be on the lookout for a survey coming at you. We want to hear from you. Yeah, we do. We're, we're going to make some changes, but we want to hear from you first. <laughs> but we're arguing about it. So we're... But, yes, you and I are having disagreements. By the way, this is what everybody loves about this podcast. So we might as well just like open the kimono, which always gives me this visualization of nothing good. When someone says open the kimono, I'm like, do I want to see what's under the kimono? I don't know. Are you naked? Do you? I don't. Do you want to see how the sausage is made? Not if it's behind a kimono. <laughs> kimono sausage? Is that a thing? Do we just Do we just name this podcast? Else? Kimono sausage. Well, you already said it's heat in our warning, but um, it could have very easily been named kimono, kimono sausage. sausage. Yeah. Oh, all right. So this episode is now not titled <laughs> Kimono Sausage. Uh, yeah, so you and I are kind of in disagreement about some functionality for calling this user and I, you know, I'm trying to not use my 21 years of software development. But that's all you do. That's all. You, that's your day. argument. Is like I've been. I'm older than you. Yes. I have less hair than that, you. That's what your father says that's to you all, when he says, "Do what I all, do." What that's I tell all you. you're doing. He's, he's like, saying, he's like, "I have less hair." Justin, and let's just keep talking over each other. Let's just keep talking over each other. Your father has less hair than I. And you're like, I've been doing right? this forever, and you have been doing it for less than forever. That's right. So I win. That's right. Which, to me, for you to come back and say, let's do a survey, was a small victory. Because otherwise, you, oh. j- you would just slam the door and you'd be like, ah, brr, 21 years, I do science computers. And I'd be like, That's, no, dude. Know, normally, <laughs> the way you lose an argument is you say, I do science computers. <laughs> That's the way you lose every argument. <laughs> With ham puppets? With I do science computers. I do science computers. That I sure do. makes me want to listen to your opinion. I do coding computers. What kind of compu- what kind of opinion do you have, Justin? Science computers. Science computers. Third title of this episode <laughs> is science computers. Do we have to talk about anything? Do the rest of this? I think that's enough. Anyway, be on the lookout if you're a user for clone of clone this user. <laughs> science computers. And we'll we'll just throw it out there in the Twitterverse too. Just have anybody just fill it out. I mean, it's worth worth getting. No, feedback. it's gonna be the users. I don't want to have. It. Now we have to we have to survey to see who. No, we're gonna we're gonna throw it out there to everybody. Why? The, why the Twitter? Yeah, the Twitters. We'll just throw it out there. I don't think that's. The smart I'm interested idea. in people's opinion. Can I tell if they're from the Twitter or not? Or yeah, eh, we'll figure it out. Okay, this sounds like a great idea. I'm glad yeah. I threw it out there. I threw it out to appease you, just to like. Not just yeah, and then when the data comes back and it supports me, it's gonna be awesome. And then you're gonna be like, I still have more experience than all of the people combined who no, filled out the no, survey. No, I will give you a very well thought out science computer answer. <laughs> beep boop pop pop beep pop boop. Science computer. Twenty one years. Speaking of science, you haven't even been alive for this long. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, you I built up. my first computer before you were born. Right. I would do, I'll move something like I did something, this, something, something, blah, blah, while you blah, were in diapers. Blah, 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 punch card. <laughs> Science. Imagination. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're just getting better and better. <laughs> All right. So when are we recording this? So, this I don't know. Night? Did we start recording? Yes. Did you hit record? Oh, no. Oh, it's you all did? All right. Let's go. We got, let's just, we got an agenda. All right. We have blog posts and things to talk about, so let's just do this. Let's do this. All right. I actually really want to talk about the third topic, so let's get to these first three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm really interested in the first two. And then let's get to that crappy oh, one. You know again. what? The the second topic is is meaty, so we. You've already it, made but it's this in the pick, title. By the way, you can pick it again, I guess. No, it's different. It's a different one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Different. Uh, I, was, I was looking ahead. All right. Top ideas for lightning part two is one of the two blog posts we'll be talking about today. Yes. 
So Ryan Owens, he's our lightning blogger. Apparently, he writes a <laughs> lot of right, he writes a lot like, of blogs what's about easy lightning. To, what's easy to blog about? Ideas. What's easier than ideas? Lightning. Lightning. Lightning ideas. Lightning. Part one and part two. He actually wrote this, and then in his blog post, when he posted internally for us to take a look. I looked at him like, didn't you already write this? I went on the blog and like, there was, I was like, no, this is the part two. I was like, oh, the I, second thought, part. I thought you were just trying to get it past us that we hadn't There's even seen so it. There's so many ideas for lightning that it's worth a part two. So I'll go first. I'm just going to name one because there's just a I'm list of them mine. here. You can name yours and I'm going to name the give us the manage external users button. So when yeah. you're, when you're using Salesforce communities, and you want to control and not just allow self-registration and you want to control the registration of partners or customers in classic, there's a nice button and it allows you to create the community user right from okay. the button, from the contact I like this. So the contact has to exist. The contact has to be in an account and the owner of the account has to have a role. These are the rules. So normally you just press the button, but in lightning, I actually don't know what you do. I don't know what you do. I think you switch to classic if that's your situation or you write, you write a trigger because you can do it in apex if you right. want. That's a, that's a pretty big one. I want to use mine because I feel like this is, well, first of all, the number one is lightning speed, which still has some of the best. If, if you're, if you're having a cocktail, and are hanging out with other Salesforce people, and you're asking why Salesforce admins drink, uh, go to the Bring Back Lightning Experience, LEX, Lightning Speed, please, uh, idea exchange idea, which now has 12,920 points, um, and read through some of the comments. Some of them are hysterical. They just, they're just hysterical. Some of them are brutal, some of them are hysterical, uh, but you should read through that. But the one that so i think so I'll, I'll spin this a little bit i saw the other day a blog post i forgot who posted it sorry we don't know people who don't post on our blog but oh did you mention that ryan wrote this i did okay uh and it was it was a it was a blog post like gone to lightning and never looking back like i'm full on lightning and i never gonna come back to to a classic like it's it's over i'm there and I read the blog post, and it was okay. It was, you know, very, it was very raw, raw lightning. And, and I thought to myself, boy, I wish I was there, but I'm so far not there. And, and it's this type of stuff, this idea. This, there's so many things that when I'm in lightning, I say this every week, I'm just like, besides the speed, speed's an issue. They got to deal with it. They have to deal with it soon. And it's, you know, it's gotten better, but it has to be dealt with much better than it is now when i i just go in i'm like working around and i'm and i start seeing things i like i'm like oh that's kind of cool Ooh, that's neat Ooh, that's a nice little functionality oh the what the what now what do you mean that doesn't exist and i just and i look for it and i think oh did i not do something am i just am i just lightning stupid did i not yes. enable it but yes. bring the the back to list which is i it's got to be one of the top five productivity things in Salesforce, which is yeah. I'm working on a list of data, I click into a record, and then I want to be able to get back to that list. Because what I always train people is, and guess what? If the list is a filtered list on something that you just did, that thing will disappear, and you can keep going until the list is empty. It gives you your work. It doesn't exist in Lightning. There is no feature for it. It seems so basic, but whatever. So back to list does not exist. There's an idea exchange out there. Idea out it's there. Under the threshold, by the way. It's I know. getting close. It's got 890 no, it's points. Like close. I think it's like 2,000 where you get the part. It's not here. like it's sitting there with 120 points. Right. It's got 890. Well, so go out there, people. As more people actually use Lightning, which, you know, when they actually are using it, this idea will go through the roof because it is needed. I left a comment on here that I think is a workaround for now. The back button? No, not the back button. That was what they said on Twitter. Don't use the back button. Just, you got, you were on a list from a tab. So the tabs have the drop downs. I know it's two clicks versus one, but just hit the, slow. I get it, but hit the, but slow, If even if they had the link back to list, 
it's going to be just as slow. No, no, I'm saying because there's actually a delay when you go click on that tab. Click the a, tab and then click the list. delay to watch it to animate. No. Oh, it's abs- pretty quick. Absolutely. But there's a delay. It, again, I'm telling you, there's a workaround. Well, no, you don't because you don't work in it. Using the you back. You don't work in it. The, so. well, I do work in it. The back, the back button is actually the fastest. Like just because you can do it on your keyboard, you can go back. You know, whatever, command backspace and it'll it'll send. We need to move on. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for nothing, Ryan. Uh I can't wait for part three. Yeah. Riveting. (laughs) (laughs) This is not the day you want to have your um your blog post talked about. First time blogger. Long time listener. Daniel Webster writes... First time, long time. That's what I was trying to hey, do. Hey, Mike. Uh, he, he writes... <laughs> he writes, wait, you can use cases in sales cloud? Hold on a sec. That's a question mark? <laughs> Hold on. Comma. Comma. Man, we're crushing people. Yeah, it was terrible today. People are going to hate us. Uh, well, it's a good thing no one listens. That's true. Uh, just Thanks download. for downloading. Just download. Adios. So I will tell you, I was on vacation while this was written. I've never read this blog post. Oh, good. Why don't you read it? Uh, well, I'm not going to read it now. Why don't you talk to me about it since you well, must have read it? Well, it's just a a basic overview of, hey, you thought you needed Service Cloud to use service, but you don't. Right. You can use, there's plenty of features built into Sales Cloud that exist that you can leverage to manage a full-fledged service desk if it's not all that complex or even still a pretty good service desk by using email to case, web to case, let's just say cases in general, they exist and you can use them and you can see them with your regular sales cloud edition, you can see cases, you have the ability to see that object. It is not one of the objects that gets hidden from you per se. Mm. So you have email to case to get cases in, you have web to case, and salespeople can be configured via profile to be able to see cases on their accounts. And that is a good thing. So he writes about how using Sales Cloud, you have the ability to see some of the features within the service cloud. Again, name of the cases. Use queues, you can manage SLAs, shows a couple of interesting formulas on how you can do that, list views, things like that, and how this can improve the sales cycle by understanding the relationship with your customer, your client better, by leveraging the service cloud inside of the sales cloud, if you will. And it's not full-fledged, it's not a console, it's not knowledge, it's not entitlements with true SLAs, it's cases. You can even use solutions if you want. Ooh, it's there. I do like a good solution. Yeah, it's there. I wonder if you could still do that public solutions thing. I bet, oh, you, I bet no. you can. I bet you can't. That went away with the public self-service. But those were two different things. The public solutions was just like a, like a little JavaScript script. It's like a little include in HTML. It's like, here, drop this on a page. You'll get a bunch of solutions if they're marked public. I wonder if that still exists. I haven't looked at it forever. I don't know. If it doesn't exist, it is, I don't know. Um, but thank you, Daniel. Good times. Bye, bye, bye. I actually felt a little bad because I didn't read it, but then I was on vacation and I was trying not to work, um, which I pretty much maintained. I think I did a good job. Like did my okay. general level of like... Oh, uh, by is, by your standards, you did fantastic. I was barely a you barely doing anything. Barely even heard from you. Right, but partner who shall remain nameless. I haven't even heard from him since he might he be left. dead. He might be. I have not heard he from a word from him. That's true. I haven't either. No, I texted. Oh, him about it's something. not true. He forwarded me something. <laughs> <laughs> Can you handle this or something? I don't know. So there you go. He's alive. Uh, all right. Next up. Uh, this is all you. You put this in. Oh, I did. Yeah, I thought we'd take... I guess we don't want to do a deep dive because we don't have too much time. No. But why don't we dip our toe into HEDA, the Higher Education Data Architecture. 
explain what it is for the listeners. I know. I, was, I uh, actually know what you're talking about, but why don't okay. you explain it? I was it? waiting for you to prompt me. So, hey, Justin. Yeah. Just. I was going to call you something nasty. Mm. Just in time. Mm. I hate that one. I know. Oh, as a kid, everyone. Just in time. Really? Super creative. Let's go. All right. Anyway, so what is HEDA? HEDA is a way for institutions, namely higher ed institutions, but I think schools, any school, could could leverage this data architecture. So again, it's, it's more of a it's more of a starting point. It's where nonprofit success pack was to me when they used to call it starter pack. It's not full fledged every process in the universe built out. But what they do have is a really nice way of managing, in my opinion, managing people at institutions and people being a wide swath of, of contacts. So obviously a student, but beyond student, you have faculty, you have um, people who are quite literally related to the contacts. So parents, siblings, right. and those people are important when it comes to recruiting cycles, admissions, things of that nature. Also, the student is very important because you want to know, you know, what what department are they are they involved in, or are they in a sports team? What courses are they enrolled in? Staff, like who are the right people who are teaching said courses or heads of departments, things of that nature. So they took some ideas from the nonprofit success pack and took on i i think of this in two different modes there's kind of like the account model itself so how it takes salesforce's traditional b2b account model where you have accounts contacts and creates more of a b2c situation without using person accounts that's better yeah so it's still it if you want to think of it, if you're familiar with Nonprofit Success Pack, the one-to-one -one model, it does a very similar thing that the one-to-one -one model so does. So builds the related account. Yeah, you create a contact and you leave the account field blank. And what it does is it creates a record type of account that it calls administrative account. So every contact has an administrative account, right. every single contact in the organization. And then what it does from there is it allows you to create two things with respect to the contact relationships and relationships are contact to contact relationships and they work in a reciprocal fashion. So mother, father, right. tutor, program advisor, academic advisor, things like that, where you right. connect two people together. Like partners for accounts. Reverse well, roles. for accounts, it's, well, like relationships it, in the nonprofit success pack. Again, right, think but nonprofit it's, success but it's relate, pack. It's a re, is it a reverse relationship? It is. It's reciprocal. Meaning if I'm... If you are someone... If I'm your if teacher, you, you're my student. Correct. Okay. That's it also like partners, understands, is, is, it understands gender. It also has three options, uh, male, female, and neutral. So you can sort of set it that way. Right. And then it has the ability to do affiliations, again, must, much like the Nonprofit Success Pack. So its idea is that every contact doesn't really belong to any other account outside of its own administrative account. And then you affiliate it to a number of other accounts. So you affiliate it to maybe their high school. So right. high school would be an account because right. you're recruiting students from that high school right you would you would potentially affiliate it to a department so you might have and you use fields on the affiliation record like status for current former or current and perspective things like that right. so that you could say they're currently at this high school and they are applying for the english department or something like that, to come to the university and go to the English department. That would be three separate affiliations. So there's a lot of affiliations created. There's sports teams, so you can capture like student athletes and what what team they're on. So that yep. in and of itself is another account. So accounts are really used very heavily throughout the system. So the account contact model is very important. We could keep going because there's lots of things that are within HEDA and 
I mean, in my opinion, it's a good start for an architecture to take in data from other systems. It's like set up for that. I don't think you would necessarily manage the entirety of a university per se in HEDA. You would have to build a lot of stuff on top of it in order to get there. Right. But the data model's there and the data model's definitely there to handle the academic programs and the program enrollments with the courses and course enrollments and course connections and terms. So it's all there. And you can obviously add as many custom objects as you want and any automation, you could throw a community on top of it or multiple communities on top of it. It's all there. So I think it's a, a really nice start. And I would, if I was posed with a question to like, all right, there's a, a charter school or a charter network that wants to get onto Salesforce, I would have to think now would I, I would obviously ask them a bunch of questions and then I would have to think about would I have them on nonprofit success or would I have them on HEDA? I'm not sure. Or principal force. Yeah, I think that's a little old. <laughs> Whatever happened to person objects? I don't know. Remember? That was like, that was going to come to us was that you were going to have an object, a custom object that you could say, could have the attributes of a person. And it's supposed to take over as the ability to handle basically contacts, but that were not associated to accounts. Yeah, I think recruiting is like the main use case for that, right? Right, you but then it about... never came about. They literally got canned. I think we saw um, it in the roadmap. I we know saw we it in some roadmap somewhere. It okay. might have even been piloted. Some I NDA. Yeah. Some NDA were breaking. Well, it's just interesting that even this model that they still use contacts for people as opposed yes. to a custom object. Or a person account. Right. Well, these are contacts because they're people that exist that you need to communicate with. They're really contacts. They're not referenced data. You know, I, 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 don't know, what, I know our little, our, again, we, our little background tiff that we're having about this where you know you're wrong. Oh, but I'm dead matter. wrong. I'm dead right. And I have other people who have agreed with me and every time mm. I make the argument it's it's soundproof yeah so, or no. whatever no yeah all right uh Hida yeah live there'll it. be more on Hida as it goes live it's it still new love still it. only like a year old I will say I was at the SKO thing nonprofit thing and and uh they broke the rooms out at one point you know and PSP this way Hida this way it was 70-30 just in terms of like looking at the, you know, in terms of the group. So it, it kind of opened my eyes. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that was the breakdown, like of where sort of the effort's going, where the sales are coming from, and where the customer base is for the, for the, for the foundation. Um, all right. Next up. Next up, whose live TV service to launch by mid-May, so say the sources. <laughs> all the sources say this. Uh, this is, I mean, this is a part of a million of these out there now. I mean, they are, there are so many of these services coming out, um, all fighting for this sort of cape, you know, cableless cable service. Yeah. And who's, I read, I was reading about it while I was on vacation. I read a lot of, I read a lot of books and I read a lot of news articles. I was enjoying reading just like just tons of news. Just like, I know you news. kept sending me things. <laughs> I kept sending you things. You'd be interested in this. It's like you you might be interested in this. No. Well, it was interesting. <laughs> I only send things that are interesting. Uh so yeah, who is coming out and they are going to I mean they've already you know pricing is supposed to be $39. They're going to do a mix of live TV. Yep. With, DVR. That's right. Cloud DVR. Cloud TVR. Right? And I don't know what's the other original big, content. Well, they already right. So that's and their and their movie library, all the right. stuff that you already have. So I'm already in at the. There's I think two levels already. Is you it Hulu I, free anymore? I don't think so. Okay, so it's Hulu nine ninety nine, which is like we're at the commercial free. Then zone. there's eleven ninety nine gets yeah. you no commercials. That yeah. seems like a no brainer. But I would never pay another dollar Hulu. Um, and then this is thirty nine ninety nine. Right. So my question is, is this on top of or in replacement of? I hope it would of? be in replacement of. I'm looking at the channels that it comes with. 
Not bad. I mean, first of all, they hit ESPN and Fox Sports and what they're calling other regional sports networks in several national markets. Right. Which to me is big time. Because to me, the only thing that really needs to be watched live are sports. Right. So if you're going to give me network television, so if you're going to give me CBS, Fox, Disney, ESPN, <laughs> Fox Dis- Sports. Disney well, is makes Well, more. Disney's ABC. Okay. So and and you know, Fox is Fox, CBS. The only one I don't really see on here is NBC. So right. But you're going to give me that plus ESPN and Fox Sports. I'm going to get most sports I watch. I'm going to get my football. I'm going to get Monday Night Football on ESPN. We get football on CBS and Fox. I'm going to miss Sunday Night Football. But I don't, again, I don't know how it works with cable net, cable companies where if you're buying the internet service from them, like I can watch football on the NBC Sports app. Right. And I can watch my Premier League matches on the NBC Sports mat, uh, app, which I do in the gym in the morning sometimes. So... I don't know where that breaks. I don't know if you have to subscribe to TV because that's right. how those apps work, right? It's like they say you have RCN, you have therefore RCN, you, you get log in this. using your RCN account. But right. if I buy internet from RCN but not television, am I entitled to those same I, things? I don't know. This is going to bring a whole slew of questions. But there's tons of other channels here, like good ones, like TNT. So you get you get the NBA, you get NBA playoffs. So all the the things I'd want to watch live, I'm getting. FX that that's got great programming. I guess on what it. so, but I guess if I ask the question of like, what am I? Again, we both have the same cable company provider. We do. We both have RCN and we have the TiVo service. Right. And did you upgrade to the one that you can download on, onto your no. onto your, or you can stream? Can you stream around your? Okay. Well, I can. Not to the other one to no. like your iPad or. Um. No. Okay. So like that's where I'm like, well, where do I, what am I getting extra? So I know what I'm dropping, right? So I'm dropping off a of price, I think. Definitely. I still have to pay for internet. And I feel like when, when I call up the cable company, I say, okay, cable company, bye-bye. But I still want internet from you because yeah. I want your 150 megabyte internet because I got to stream all this stuff over you. They go, great, our internet, $200 a month. <laughs> I'm like, no. wait, wait, what? Well, then you're basically saying, well, then all of the other stuff is free then. Television, cable provider. I guess. No way. I mean, I can ask my sister. She literally, she just signed up for RCN and she's a cord cutter. She just has internet. She has internet and a Chromecast. That's all she has. So then I think, okay, so where do I go to watch this? What device? Because it's not, doesn't, right? Apple TV. Your Apple TV will support this. Of course, it's Hulu. It has the Hulu app on it. The, oh, the, oh. the future of television is apps. Okay, so it's on the Hulu app on your Apple TV. Why wouldn't it be? Where well, else would it be? No, I'm just, I'm just. I saying. think smart TVs will just have it built right in. I mean, this TV right here. I can tell you, has everything. Smart in it. TVs are terribly unsmart. But this TV, yeah, that when I turn so it on, mine. it's got. That's how Netflix, I watch Amazon. Hulu, right? It's got Amazon. That's the only how reason I, I go watch there Amazon. Is Amazon because Amazon and Apple don't get along. Right. But that's how I watch I Amazon is like through the TV. And even the cable company they has like too. channels yes. like for Netflix, even though it's awful. Like I would never use that interface. That's the thing. It's like See, the Apple interfaces are really good that's for the apps. Are. So that's what, so I'm like, I, until I can be guaranteed, because the day I come home and I want to watch the New York Fighting Jets on a Sunday and I go load up Hulu, whatever, and I go, and it goes, slow internet, and I go, Wah! and I rage, like, until I know that I can trust it. That's why I still keep HBO on my cable. It's because, I yes, do I stream a lot of HBO? Most HBO I stream. But on the stuff that I really want to watch, I don't want to be beholden because I still think it's not perfect. Well, you know what you could, I mean, just speaking in terms of your, your fighting jets, I mean, you, you could just get a one of the digital um, antennas. I've tried it. It's terrible. Should work. No, it's terrible. I've tried the digital HD antennas. It's terrible. Huh, that's a shame. Yeah. So, as but a- this has a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, you get your you get your F again. FX to me, they have great stuff. 
you want to watch the news, they got CNN, they got Fox News. Right. They've got, I mean, so, it just but, seems like they're missing NBC. All the things me. I do is when I look at these services, I go, okay, so here's what I have. I have a tuner that can record six TV shows at a time. Great. I then can Do take that, but I have no conflicts. How many can you record at any one time? Don't know. I think I have over four hundred. Let me wait, let me listen. counter. But let me counter that. Okay. All right. Presumably, presumably you can get to this from anywhere. Well, it's also Hulu, so the shows are there. Some of them, right? Well, I would assume you know, making assumptions. Daily Show. These not 40, on Hulu anymore. Do they have card? Uh, the Comedy Central in this list? Nope. They don't. This so they is, lost their they lost their Yes. Because they were probably charging them too much. So this is what the, this is what I this is what these services bug me about is I was all in on Hulu. I love, and I love Hulu. I'm not giving Hulu up because I actually like them. I don't really watch any of the original content, but I've watched a I couple do. of the movies. Um Difficult People. Fantastic. Oh, it's a terrible show. Oh my god, so funny. It's terrible. Watch it with the with the what are they called? The for people closed captioning, closed captions. Thank you, um, thank you for <laughs> saving it. Uh, closed captions makes it better. Okay. They talk too fast. So, but this is this is one of my things. I go in, I want to watch something. I stop, I stop recording something on my TiVo because oh, Hulu's got it. But when I go to get it on Hulu, I find the experience from show to show is very different. Sometimes it's like I have the last two shows. Sometimes I have five shows. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I have, I have two season seasons. Or something. Sometimes it goes back to the original. It's what they're paying for. I understand. And that, but it's because it's such a new model, and it's not like ESPN charging RCN blah to carry it. They have to figure out a better a right. better way to do this. But to you keep just the cost showed down. Comedy Central's not on their list. That's right. So I now feel I feel like that's an NBC thing. So NBC, NBC Sports, Comedy Central, not on this because they're Showtime fighting in their own world. Showtime not on this, right? None of those, right? HBO, none of those. Well, HBO, I don't think an NBC are connected. I think maybe Showtime is or CBS. Anyway, this Showtime is this is where I, I the whole streaming thing gets me just frustrated is because I have to constantly be thinking about, and I think this is where I think Apple TV and the TV app, which they still haven't gotten it perfect yet, still have a lot to go, but the concept of I go to one place, and you take all my apps, just like cable did. Take all my apps and make it so I'm just watching through one place, and I don't have to go search it out. Show me difficult people. Oh, it's in, it's here on Amazon, or it's for here for purchase, or you can stream it on Netflix. Great, that's what I want. But because of all the fighting in every service, and who used to have Netflix or Comedy Central, now it doesn't. Amazon doesn't play well on Apple. Like it just drives me bananas. This is still to me very exciting. Are you I gonna will- do it? No, no. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to one of my favorite Mark Benioff quotes, which is, "Don't do not overestimate what you can do in one year, and do not underestimate what you can do in ten. So where is this gonna be in five years? That's what excites me. Oh yeah, five years from now, we're gonna have this stuff everywhere. What I want is someone to come in and solve the internet issue to get me away from the cable providers because the cable providers still control the internet and when they still control the internet, they still got you by the cojones. I was, uh, yeah. Well, Verizon's not technically a cable company. Yeah. They're more of a provider of <laughs> service to the outside world, right? And, uh, Phone. NFL Red Zone, can you get it on Hulu? Doesn't appear that way. NFL Just, Network doesn't appear to be on here either. Boom. I would, so, it, so for me, I could not cord cut this. Well, you could because you can stream on Amazon. Their games. Oh. The Thursday night games that you wouldn't otherwise this be able year. to watch. You'd be able Last to, year was on Twitter. Twitter. This year it's on Amazon. That's right. Next year it could be on... Amazon's going to win this anyway. Like, we're talking about Hulu, but... In the long run, Amazon's going to win this game. You think game. Amazon's going to win this? Amazon's going to win a lot of things, and this is one of the things they're going to win. Yes. Okay. All right. Interesting. But all right, let's move off. We've taken way too much time. Let's make some picks quickly. That was a fun little topic. It was fun. I, I, I love streaming TV. Me I could talk about it all day. I figured you could. All right. So I think I picked just something very it. similar to this before, but I'm right. going to pick a different. So I'm picking the Giphy Stickers app. For messages, not just Giphy gifts, but Giphy stickers. These are the ones where you search and you find a sticker and then you 
like force tap on it and you drag it and you drop it onto somebody's previous message. Right. And it's really fun. It's fun to respond to somebody's message with like a stupid thing that just sits on top of it. Anyway, <laughs> Giphy stickers for messages. So the app that works inside of the messages platform. But the app is the same as the Giphy app. You no, just flip it, between the two. No, there's a Giphy stickers app and then there's a Giphy app. Stickers. Oh, they're, they are different apps. Giphy. You must stickers. have both. Giphy. Stickers. Giphy. You must have them both installed. I'm picking this one. <laughs> Second worst pick ever. I just stickered you. To spring 12. <sighs> you picked a release. No. So you lose. I every win time. every time. Every, every time, time you all lose. The time. You lose. Uh, I'm picking something a little bit strange. You and I have had a little back and forth over uh, Kickstarter. I, I swear, Kickstarter alone should thank you and I sending each other Kickstarters. Yeah, every, we just, if you send me one, I'm paying for it. If I send you one, you pay for it. We'll see. Uh, so we oh, bought, do you have uh, another one for so me? So I... This one caught my attention. So I, we did one the other day. I'll talk about it just because we should talk about it. Um, a local museum is raising money to basically better preserve the Jim Henson Muppet Puppet collection. Yep. And they're raising money, and they're raising $40,000, and it's already at the 80 100 Did you go to the original exhibit? I did not, no. Okay. I thought that when so I clicked are, on it, it was like, oh, we're raising money. This is it. Like, it's, there's going to be no more Muppets. I was like, oh, I'll save the Muppets. <laughs> so I went to the original exhibit. It was over a year ago, maybe even two years ago now, and it was great. So it got such a great, it received so much great, uh, I guess, acclaim, and it drew so many people to the right. museum that they decided, let's make this a permanent fixture at the museum, we'll right. make it a permanent exhibit. And it, last time I was there, which was about two months ago, maybe, it was still being built, but you could see like where it was. It was right. on the third floor, and it was like, oh, cool, that's where the Jim Henson exhibit is going to be. So for me, first of all, Muppets, love them, grew up with them. And then two, throw in a little Queens action, and I'm like, I'm all in. Uh, so I'm supportive of both things. So it was all in. So this one gets at my heart, because basically anything that's like about, you know, I have a daughter. So, and, you know, this is becoming a thing in our society about, uh, there's a huge missing part of the technological and science world, and that's women in it. It's something that they're not being drawn to, career-wise, college, jobs, anything. So this was, this is a magazine. Uh, it's a it's called S'more. I don't know where the name came from. It probably said it somewhere. But it's a girls' magazine for science, or a science girls' magazine. And I have a daughter, so I was like, I'll buy this, or I'll fund it, and then, you know, whatever. She actually does still read magazines. She actually likes, I'm not a magazine, but she actually likes the physical paper so does a, my wife a it's not technology so when she gets all her technology taken away she still has paper to go there back you go, to smart kid yeah so and for things well, like when when she question when yes. she gets her technology taken away does that include the kindle that's for debate that's like on the edge it's, it's on tech, the edge but it's reading a book right like if, if it, my tech was taken away i'd be like all right i guess i have to read a book right like that would be literally my thing. I'd yeah. be like, I guess I read a book, or that's it. Yeah, I'm not light year. Yeah, <laughs> probably just light science there. computer, <laughs> science coding. Uh, so I anyway. So it's called S'more. It's on Kickstarter. It's made by a scientist, um, and it's going to be a. Um, it's going to be about. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, a science magazine. Come three six times a year, and they're going to do a digital end of. And a print, so I kind of like that. I was thinking about getting just the digital, but she likes print. And anyway, any way I can keep that going, keep my young daughter involved in loving science, um, uh, is I will go for it. So I said that. So that's it. So it's called S'more, and you can find it on the Kickstarter. It's called S'more Magazine, Ignite Her Brilliance. It's on Kickstarter. And they're at 20000 of their 7500 goal, so they're doing pretty well. And uh, hopefully it comes out. All right. Well, that's it for us. Follow Justin at Justin Elstein. Follow me at Jason and Matt. Follow Arcus Inc. at Arcus Inc. Facebook.com slash Arcus Inc. Success community and Power of Us Us. Don't forget about the Power of Us hub groups. we got groups in there. LinkedIn, Google+, subscribe and review. 
Stitcher, iTunes. We're on the Google Play now, and I was trying to get us in a couple others. I don't know if we're in there yet, but if we are, that would be great. Other than that, uh, next week, maybe, maybe, next week, uh, we'll see you. Justin Jason saying, enjoy those cloudy days.